Thrust in again, crossover minute again. Proverbs continued. 18, verse 1. A man who isolates himself seeks his own desire. He rages against all wise judgment. Now, one thing that isolation is not, it is not when we want and need to get alone with the Lord, which we, we should be doing. We should have our, our time of solitude and intimacy with God alone, no matter how long or short that ends up being, then we're able to do, or what? it's just like a healthy marriage, healthy relationship, having personal time one-on-one -on -one is, um, that's what deepens and broadens, but especially deepens the relationship and the bonding and the being there for and with one another and, and being present, being very present with one another. Um, but what isolation is, is, um, purposeful or subconscious removal of self from community and fellowship from healthy, appropriate, balanced community and fellowship. Now, all that said, um, every one of us, depending on how we're wired and how our life is on, that will be a little different from person to person as far as quantity, you know, how much time spent and what types of settings and stuff like that. It's understandable, but we all need some healthy, balanced measure of community and fellowship. And the more that we get away from that, now I understand some of us who are um, a little bit more loner type, you know, just really, really content alone, that we're going to be the type of people that we're going to have to let the spirit of God tug on our hearts to get out there and be a part of this group or this outing or this fellowship or meet with people time to time for lunch or whatever, you know, things get out there, you know, don't, don't say, because we're just, you know, we, we may have ex our, our nature or extended seasons of time in our life where we're just so content being by ourselves. Um, and, um, and that's, again, that's, that's how some are. And, and that's, you know, I, I was like that for years. Uh, incidentally, my life is kind of revolutionized in that regard. But um, the thing about isolation, though, is that um, when we, when we are proactively or subconsciously isolating, uh, especially as a defense mechanism, we're going through something or, um, or if we're just um, paralyzed um, by sociality and stuff, the concern when it gets out of balance, um, when it's not just about hobbies and interests that we're doing, you know, on our own that we like to do on our own or things like that, or caretaking of a home or whatever, you know, we start to get into our own mind and emotions a little embellishingly, and we have the human naturistically tendential type thingly tendency to begin to fabricate, fabricate and create a little world within our brain, within our mind, within our emotions that may have its roots or origins in some real experiences or feelings or thoughts or ideas, but may begin to go out of bounds or left of center or just get in such a way that it's actually not accurate or that it's unrealistic or now it may be very real because we have in fact created this and this is our reality and this is what we're experiencing, but it's not founded in no longer founded solely or at all maybe in truth. Um, in, um, in, um, in, in natural reality or in, in, um, what's accurate or, um, and there's instability that, that, that takes place in this, um, it becomes obtuse. And the thing about it is that it's so believable because we've created it, we felt it, we've invested in it, we've thought it through or however we, it came to be, um, and this could be just, just within our own mind. This could also play out or express itself in our, in our artistic expression or in our online personas um, and, and um, presence and interaction. But and the thing about it is that we actually start to lock into this world, this experience, this existence, and we begin to grow into this 
we, it, and it becomes part of us and we become part of it and we begin to see our world through its lens and for the things that we see that contradict it or that hold it accountable or address it its issues or faults or or um areas of concern or things like well we start to get we start to get defensive we start to get uh um resistant and um and maybe that may we go into further seclusion to keep in our world because we don't want our world to collapse or crumble and we believe in it and it and we feel it and we want it may be a security blanket it may like I said oftentimes it's a defense mechanism from pain or hurt or avoiding um, dealing with trauma or healing or that type of thing um, or just things that are overwhelming to us and um, what we're doing is is we're painting we're painting murals and stained glass portraits with our world and the inside of the lens of our eyes and so whenever we see the light of truth through the word of god or through the reality of our day around us or people and things all it does is illuminate what we've painted and sometimes it feels like it's actually reinforcing um, or that we're only looking at our paintings our stained glass portraits instead of looking around and seeing reality pulling the curtain up so maybe talking about this just being just having an open conversation like this right now helps bring the light of okay well do i do that in some way shape or form or in a lot and what can i do what what can i do to adjust like what can i do to begin to address this and, and to begin to just be honest with myself about it? it's okay this I'm, what i'm telling what we're talking about here is something that's human nature and that we we many of us may have a, a tendency to any given degree uh to to uh to do this because again you know when it comes to uh god-given defense mechanisms those are like stop gaps until we get actual healing and processing through and out of of hurt or harm or trauma or pain or whatever you know um so it's understandable it's like it's like that initial covering of the gate of the gaping wound you know but you can't just that's not the permanent solution like putting your hand over a, a gash and and holding your arm together while it's broken or out of joint you know it's, that's not that's just that that's till you get to the hospital till you get to the er you know uh or until you get something to wrap around it and tourniquet it and all that stuff or whatever and then get to the so as you can see um god gives us initial temporary emergency stop gaps and protections until we get in a place a safe place of help and healing so my encouragement would be if we're doing that maybe find out why are we doing that and what can we do to address those areas of our heart or soul our life with the security of god's grace and presence the safety of his presence and protection to heal those memories those thoughts those wounds those areas of the heart and soul what can we do to posture our heart in that place of humble surrender in God's arms where he holds, protects, and heals, and mends, and restores the broken heart that comes to him.